listening to the Ones Ready Podcast, a team of Air Force Special Operators forged in combat with over 70 years of combined operational experience, as well as a decade of selection instructor experience. If you're tired of settling and you want to do something you truly believe in, you're in the right place. Now here's your host, PJ Team Leader, former Indoc Instructor Supervisor, Entrepreneur, and Physician Assistant Student, Brian Silva. What's up, everybody? Brian Silva here for the Ones Ready Podcast. You guys are in the team room. Hope you guys are staying healthy and safe out there. I know things are a little bit hectic out there, but we're still here for you making these podcasts, and we're ready to rock and roll. Today, we're going to talk about a huge topic, which is failing, and failure when you're at selection and beyond what you should expect and what you should do in order to make that failure count and move forward with that. But first, I want to say thanks again for you guys listening and watching on YouTube, all the comments, um, all the stuff on IG, you guys can always reach out. And, you know, I hope that all these podcasts and us talking here has helped you guys, uh, you know, get prepared for selection. If you're at selection, it's helping you through that process. Not right now, you're probably not doing much training, but at least you got something to listen to. So thanks again for, uh, you know, hitting us up uh, on IG and YouTube and stuff. Keep on commenting and throw us a uh, five-star rating up on Apple Podcasts if you got the time, and we know you do. So, again, uh, also a couple things that I wanted to hit too. Ne- we never officially said congratulations to Senior Master Sergeant Select Trent Sigmiller and Senior oh. Master Sergeant Select Aaron Love. I had to do it. You know, yeah. we haven't officially said it, but congrats to you guys. I don't you know. know if you had to. I don't know if you had to. Yeah, that's, that was going through my mind too. I thought we could just be friends. But cool. You guys yeah, cool, cool. Do better. Cool, cool. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, just so you guys know, that's that's it. They are Thanks, it's man. awesome though. Um, so and aside from that, you guys know we're not getting any money from these guys. Everly Stock, Alpha Brew Coffee Company, and the Strike Force Energy. You guys can go check them out. You can still use the discount. One's ready. Go get some awesome products. If you have another, uh, you know, store or product that you want to, you think would be valuable for guys that are going through selection and you want to throw us another discount code, we'll throw you in here also and keep on going like that. We always want to work with awesome companies and stuff. So thanks again, uh, for all those guys and we hope you go check them out because they're awesome products. So let me get back into this failure topic here. I know it's kind of like a doom and gloom topic, but failure, you're going to experience it a lot throughout the pipeline and, you know, throughout the rest of your life. We are constantly putting ourselves through test after test, you know, throughout high school, you're taking tests for each class. When it comes to the Air Force and getting into special operations, you have to take the pass test, you have to go through MEPS, you have to make sure that, you know, drug tests, all these other tests that you have to go through. Drug test is not when you want to fail, by the way. Um, so there's something you want to tell acceptable. us about when you joined, Brian? Was that a, a big test? <laughs> yeah, that was, that was a, a big test of whether or not. Kind of an awkward pause, like, <laughs> seems that you should be able to knock that one out of the park, but all right. Anyway, moving trust on. Me, trust me, it's not something you want to fail. Um, <laughs> So you're going to be forced, faced with a lot of tests throughout your life and throughout the pipeline, especially. So we're going to talk about ways that you can overcome that and things, the way to kind of reframe a failure because it hits guys really hard. And being an instructor at, at selection, you know, I've seen guys cry. I've seen guys, you know, be happy there, everything in between, you know, a range of emotion goes through a person when they realize that they might not be a part of this career field for at least a couple of years. So we're going to talk about all those kind of things. So, Peach, I'm going to just hit you up first. Um, you know, in your opinion, what does it really mean to fail? Aside from like, okay, you didn't get a certain score or whatever. Like, you know, is there any way that you think a person can fail forward or that kind of thing? Learn from the mistakes. What do you think about failure as a, as a definition? So essentially the silver lining of failure, right? So, um, yeah, failing forward and failing fast, I see as being kind of the same, not the same thing, but they are aligned together. Um, failing forward means not just, you know, getting hit, failing, and just, you know, having a pity party or just feeling bad for yourself, right? It's failing, being able to objectively step back and learn from the situation, learn why you failed, what was the, you know, what was going on at the time of failure, 
what could I have done to prevent it or what can I do next time to improve that? And you have to do it quick. So that's where the failure, failing fast comes in because if I sit here and I fail and then I really dwell on it, then Are you I'm screwing to ex- myself and I'm potentially yeah. screwing my team, right? You try I to mean, explain we, it away. You try to do all these right. other things. Like you're just lengthening the process. Like get to the end already. Okay. Yeah. Hey, I mean, that wasn't my, yeah. That wasn't my best run. Okay. Got it. How can I be better? Okay. Let's, let's get on with the business exactly. and making Fail this better. Fast. So the, the example I use is say I'm, I'm shooting a target or I'm shooting a, shooting a target, right? But I miss, I shouldn't just like, what the hell, you know, it's, <laughs> it's a boom, miss, boom, immediately right on there. And then, um, I mean, where would we be at right now if Operation Eagle Claw was a success? Yeah, that mean that's so it was a failure, right? I mean that's pretty much been the the overarching uh, you know judgment for it, if you will. I guess. Well, yeah, but that mm-hmm. failure led to JSOC. It led to all of SOCOM. To, to all of it, yeah. It led right. it led to everything, yeah. So so so. In the end, we failed Ford as, as a force, as a nation, because without that failure, we wouldn't be where we're at today, without a doubt. Yeah, and I think there are a lot of conflicts that were like that. You know, like you look at Mogadishu and that kind of stuff, that paved the way for the way that we prepare for battle and the things that wear, like body armor and the kinds of guns that we carry, the way that we communicate, you know, outside to the FOB and that kind of stuff. So each one of those lessons definitely contributes to hopefully future successes. But like you said, if you just sit there and you dwell on it and you're like, screw it, I'm just not going to try anymore. I mean, I, I, I couldn't get that one shot. And then you just kind of throw your stuff down. And I've seen a lot of people do that, honestly. Like, like, especially I go back to body breathing a lot because it's a kind of a personal and up close kind of thing. But, you know, when they, you grab that snorkel from them and then they just like, dude, what were you doing? How can we oh, do no. that? Like, you were, <laughs> that was that happens. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. It, it happens, and you. That's when you know you just pull them out of the pool. You smoke them for a while for doing that. Smoke the whole team. Um, but you're just giving them a chance to excel and be better. That's all you're doing. Oh man, yeah, you were they, almost they there, Peaches. Yeah. Oh, Peaches, you were almost there, man. It is <laughs> your turn to the dark side is almost complete, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, definitely um, learning from those mistakes. And I think, um, I don't know where the quote's from, but it just talks about how failure is a better teacher than success. Because, you know, when you fail, you know that you haven't reached any level. But when there's a level you succeed, you're like, all right, well, I guess I'm good. I'm probably good enough. I don't know. That means you haven't set your standards high enough if you just constantly succeed and you succeed at every single thing. So keep on setting those standards high. All right. Let's go to Aaron for this next one. Um, so there's a lot of people like we're like I was just talking about, you know, you can succeed and you can be like, all right, I'm good. Um, but sometimes you don't feel like that was really like an, an earned thing. Maybe you have a natural talent or whatever. So what do you think is worse, failure or unearned success for growth? Uh, what do I think is worse? I, I think unearned success is probably far and away uh, worse than failures. Failure is at least objective. Um, you know, maybe there is, you know, there are people that have been wronged in all sorts of things like wrongful convictions in court or, you know, a, a basketball game that should have been, you know, that the infamous pass interference play with new Orleans in the football game. Like, yeah, that should have been called. Things should have been differently. You know, you know, should have went differently, but you know, they didn't. So my, my bad, that's just the way that the facts go. But, you know, most times, like when we're talking about what's different uh, between the failure and unearned success for me is like, you know, a failure is a failure and you know what you can get better on. Like you, you're like, this is objective. Unearned su- success, it's almost like having the imposter syndrome where there are some days where you're like, holy cow, I can't. I still have days where I'm like, holy cow, I can't believe I'm a PJ. I can't believe, you know, I'm in this assignment. I can't believe I've had these experiences, really. And it's not, you know thinking it's cool. It's good, bad, ugly, indifferent, you know, some of the best and worst times of my life have happened, you know, in this career. But so there's just some days where you're like, holy cow, I, I can't believe I am who I am. You know, um, I would rather fail than I would be kind of like blinded by unearned successes or things that weren't mine, you know? Yeah. Cause you can a hundred percent appreciate the failure better or worse. You know, you learn from those mistakes and you really actually take in those lessons learned rather than I think, you know, people that 
have that unearned success kind of feeling, you know, you're sitting at the top, but you don't know if it's a stable platform because how'd you get here? Did you put up forth the effort to like build up your way to where you're at right now? Or did you just like somehow take a magic elevator and get up there? Yeah. Skip, you'll see that though, line. because you see people resting on their laurels and they just, they're like, Hey, that was a, that was a good run I had or a good deployment. And I'm going to ride that train for a while. <laughs> I'm going to ride like, this one out. Mm. See how long. Well, yeah. I, I think, though, looking at your failures objectively, your own personal failures is a skill. And so being able to look at your failures and objectively look at them and learn from them in a positive light, that's a skill set. You know what I mean? Because, like, people have a hard time failing at something and then telling themselves, like, hey, I failed. It's okay. Let's move forward. Like, we see it all the time in the selection courses. Um, you know, that's one of those skill sets you need to develop uh, by working on your perception and your self-honesty and uh, all that other kind of stuff. And yeah, it takes I, failing a lot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. hundred percent. And I think what you said, Trent, you know, about people not telling the truth about their failures, you see that a lot, even in the air force. Now, if you go ask a lot of people that have been to selection, they'll just say, you know, I wasn't, I didn't make it or I was injured or whatever. And a lot, sometimes that's true. However, the extent of their injury, you know, was it kind of made up or, blown up a little bit because we know guy we all know guys that had broken bones in the pipeline and they still push through whatever kind of things that they had to in order to get the job done i'm so, pretty sure most of those guys were doing so well that the cia came in and grabbed them for a secret mission and they that's were doing where they got so hurt. well so you're yeah, telling me then, they took you out of indoc and put you right onto a team right yeah. away yeah man sorry they didn't do it a whole lot but uh that's what they did with me so i've heard that story so many times it can't be a lie it can't be it, <laughs> it has to be true <laughs> All right, uh, uh, Trent, man. this one is... I'm sorry. <laughs> Brian's trying to bring it back. <laughs> I know, you guys always, like, I'm, I'm, it's like I'm driving sometimes, and then sometimes Aaron will come over and just be like, whoop, grab the steering wheel. We're just shooting like, out the tires. What are you doing? Yeah, we just flip out to the spin out to the side. You boys like Mexico? <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Um, All right. his charger, I don't know, I don't know the tire <laughs> <laughs> All right, Trent, what do you think of uh, fear of failure as, you know, a motivational tool either for yourself or even when you're an instructor, you know, for the students? Because a lot of times we give people like a crazy timeline, like you need to go down to the creek and you need to be completely drenched, bring these jerry cans back in a minute and a half. Ready to go. We know they're going to fa fail, but there's still some motivation there. Um, you know, how can guys use that because i know there's a lot of fear of failure no one wants to fail but how do you get guys to use that and how do you think you can, they can benefit well i, th I think it, it's a it's a spectrum right like if if your fear is a spectrum from one to ten if your fear of fear of failure is a 10 then when you hit that that failure mark it's going to be catastrophic right but you should i mean i have a healthy fear of failing i don't like to fail i, I really try hard not to do it but it's not like a it's my life doesn't fall apart if I fail, um, you know, like I think once you get that high and the, the fear of failure become, uh, you kind of harden, I don't know, you can, be, you can become fragile in a way, like your ego hardens so much or something that happens that when you finally hit that failure point, uh, if you're so afraid of it uh, and you don't have that growth mindset um, and all you're doing is, is trying not to fail because of whatever reasons your ego or, or whatever, um, that's when it, when it goes really, really poorly. Uh, but you, you should have like a certain amount of that fear. Or at least I do. I'm not trying to tell you that you should be afraid of failing. Um, but it, it needs to be within, within the certain range that where like when you do fail, cause you're going to fail if you go through the pipeline. I don't, I've, I've never spoken to anybody that's like, no, I made it through the pipeline, zero failures, uh, zero setbacks. It was hundred percent good to go. And my whole career was, was perfect. Um, you, you just need to make sure that you're regulating that so that you have that growth <laughs> mindset so that when you do hit that failure, you're able to. You know, process it, move it forward, not dwell on the past, don't go down those rabbit holes of, of self-pity and all that other nonsense, and uh, you're able to learn from it, and then you can truly grow. I think that yeah. fear of failing helps keep you sharp, though. Um, I mean, it, it, it's just because you, you don't want to mess up. You don't want to embarrass yourself. You don't want to let yourself and your team down. So that fear helps keep you sharp, that, but, at least for me anyway. I mean, I think that's what we, leads to the learning, though, like on a, at a certain percentage, right? Because like everything that I've ever failed, I, I remember those things forever. Like I don't dwell on them, but I can definitely tell you about every failure I've had in my career. And then people start talking about like, oh, remember that one time when like you were really good at something? And I'm like, I don't know. 
I, I guess so. <laughs> okay, that only happened once where I was really good at something. So that, that was like a one-off. Like yeah. I, I didn't, re- I didn't repeat that behavior. It was just a good time. It was a good run <laughs> yeah. for me that day. Go ahead and need you to identify that moment. Actually, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, hold on, hairdressing or something. See what yeah. happened was the CIA pulled me on the secret mission, and uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Well, and you know what's funny, Peaches, you're talking about like the fear, fear of failure, like keeping you sharp. But like I was, I was liking it to alert because we have alert commitments when we're back stateside where you have you might have to go out like respond to like real stuff like even as as an instructor um you know down in new mexico i had to go and, and respond to real stuff and i had friends that went and you know like rescued people off the you know lost hikers off the side of a mountain and we did a recovery down there uh down at the missile range but um yeah it's that uh that kind of fear of knowing that if your phone rings like are you ready to go right now are you ready to go on some heinous stuff like right now that's always kind of creeping in the back of your head of, uh, you know, what if things do go south? Am I ready to, am I ready not just to go have like a normal day of work, but am I ready to go get it on like post-apocalyptic zombie virus scenario that we're all living in right now? But like, are you ready to get that call is always something that's, that's something that's always in the back of my mind for, for not wanting to fail, not, not wanting to get that call and be like, Oh geez, I can't go, you know? Yeah. And that's super important, especially, you know, even if you do get back from a trading iteration or whatever, that fear of failure and that fear of not succeeding on a mission, it keeps you in your cage and makes you get your gear ready after you're done, you know, just reconstitute, refit, do all those steps that are necessary. That way, you know, if you do get the call, like you're saying, then you can just head straight back into your locker. You know where everything's at, everything's ready to go. And then a minimum amount of time is spent whenever there's actually stuff going down and you have to go you know, take off and get a flight to wherever. So yeah, you definitely got to make sure that that fear of failure is not something that keeps you from doing something. You're like, Oh, I'm I'm not going to do, you know, X or Y because I'm scared that I may fail. No, man, get in there and get after it and learn. Yep. 100. Yeah. How how else are you going to learn? Training is the time to do it. Training is the time to fail. You should go at it. Yeah. Yeah. People at the end of their lives don't always think about the things that they did. It's always the things that they didn't get to do if they held back, you know. And I talked to a lot of guys who were in selection um, previously, they quit or whatever, and it just always kind of lingers in their head. Or if they didn't ever try, you know, we get comments every once in a while about people that are 50s or whatever, and they're like, man, I really wish I would have gone for this thing because it sounds really awesome. And, you know, these are the kind of dudes that I want to be around super motivated and all that stuff. So definitely go out there, fail. If you, you try at least then you fail. Yeah. Go ahead and try try not to fail too. see how that works. (laughs) See which one you like better. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) See which one happens more. (laughs) All right. Peach, this one's for you. So you think a person can get used to failure, build up that tough and like, callous as they get through and get used to failures or um you know should they let it affect them that much um, i feel like this is a personal attack on me yeah um i <laughs> you, you, you absolute you, way to use your feeling words it makes me feel upset when <laughs> i mean i i think all of us are living proof that you can get used to failing oh, yeah. um yeah you build up a callous it still stings when you fail. Like that doesn't go away. And and like, like we were just talking about the fear of failure, but it, it helps toughen you up. And, and I almost give you, I would say some perspective, like when something fails and it's like, you know, you do see people dwell on it and you fail the same thing. And you're like, yeah, okay. On to the next, you Mm -hmm. know, like it's, it just happens. And, and, uh, you know, when you, when you try and rest on, I say rest on your lawyers, that's like what, three times during this podcast. That's ridiculous. <laughs> okay. So Trent normally every time he says it. Yeah. <laughs> it's because, it's because Peach got a Water brand bro. new uh, saying of the day calendar and that's the saying of today. <laughs> <laughs> I just have a little word. Laurels is the word on Apple screensaver. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> that underneath resting on your laurels. I think that the chief's group sends it out. Oh, <laughs> Um, (laughs) so believe it or not uh, I'm actually pretty decent at public speaking I'm a lot better than I am on a podcast but whenever I go to give a speech someplace right a lot of times I'll just kind of go like I'm gonna wing it 
right? Because <laughs> I'm... You're going to need to you, check the YouTube channel out because oh, those yeah, were some of the yeah. best finger guns. <laughs> <Double> guns. <laughs> pew, pew, pew. In, my, in my head, exactly I heard what I was going to bring up. I don't, <laughs> pew, pew, pew. That's right. Literally shooting from the hip. <laughs> exactly. And um, I'll tell you what, man, there's been a couple times where that has backfired on me because... <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, that did not work. No, no. And then, you know what? I go in the next time I get you know, tagged with a, do some kind of speech and I'm practicing the night before the day of. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you've built up a callus to failing at public speaking. That's what you're saying. Sure. <laughs> well, he's more, right, he's so, more avoided so the possible. pain by, uh, by being better prepared. I think also doing tall things. I'm just, it's just <laughs> constant. Bad, failure, yeah. So <laughs> yeah, he's still trying to dunk. It doesn't work. Oh man. The next spud. <laughs> I got the finger guns though. No, but I think, you know, when I failed when I was younger, I still kind of am hard on myself a lot of times when I fail, but it helps me, you know, internalize it and try and learn from it. Um, but when I was younger, you know, it would keep me up at night. Like, I can't believe that I freaking failed on whatever thing that it was. And a lot of times it was public speaking. I'm a, I'm a terrible public speaker. <laughs> But, you know, I also continue to put myself out there and learn from it, you know, sometimes wing it and try and do the best job that I can to, you know, make outline, do the best, you know, practice some words. I'll read up on Apple, you know, sometimes my screensaver, <laughs> make sure I sound intelligent sometimes, but, you know, come up with there a new are, saying. yeah, come up with a new saying, but there, you know, there are a lot of times where I was just hard on myself and over the years, you know, I learned like, oh, well. I, you know, I really screwed that one up. Let me think of how I could do it better. You know, sometimes I'll write it down or whatever. Um, just go on a run and really think about it. But, you know, I get over it a lot quicker now and I'm able to handle more tasks because the quicker you get over it, the more you can handle in the future because you, you don't have time to do all, you dwell on one little incident throughout the day when you have a full day of, you know, all the other stuff that you got to do when you end up being 35. I so. still think about my failures, though. Some of my big ones, I still think about them. It's not like it haunts me or anything like that, but it's still like, okay, if I see this again or this situation happens again, like I know, I know what to do better now. Yeah. I think that's one of the good things about the pipeline, though, is, is we're always telling guys just to live in the moment and only focus on the next thing right in front of them. Like you shouldn't have enough time or bandwidth to, to focus on what went wrong three hours ago. And if you're focusing on that, you're, you're going to veer off track and you're, you're probably going to fall apart and, and, you know, just keep failing some more until you're, you're out of the pipeline. So live in the moment. Don't dwell in the past and just move forward. <laughs> so, and so, then, live it, so live in the moment. The <laughs> and then, uh, yeah. And then maybe you get a debilitating alcohol problem and then you just, <laughs> your whole life maybe, goes crazy. Maybe you're like, growth mindset is a better play, way to go about that. Not, <laughs> less, less hippie, more growth mindset. Anything would have been better than that, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that's that's definitely important. You know, we tell guys all the time, don't try and predict what's going to happen. Or when you're looking at selection, don't look at the entire time span or of the pipeline or of selection. But it's the same thing going backwards too. You know, learn from your mistakes, but don't sit there and dwell on every single thing that has happened because you're going to screw up. You're going to miss a timeline. You're going to be that guy that's trying to put on their their pants or whatever and you're the slowest person and the team has to pay up because you're the slowest dude getting your boots on or whatever it's going to happen don't dwell over it just learn from it and keep on moving on yeah and i think speaking for you know current and past instructors out there let me tell you from the instructor i guarantee that instructor three hours later in the day is not thinking back to that for that thing that you screwed up in front of that instructor i guarantee it because i never did people would be like oh man i felt like i had the worst day i screwed up in front of you five times but like Man, I didn't think about that the second it was over. I'm thinking about all kinds of other stuff other than you. Unless like, it was funny. Yeah, unless it was really funny yeah. or like we all laughed at it <laughs> yeah. or something. But like those minor interactions where you think you're like, and you know, me as a student, I did the same thing. I was just like, oh my God, that guy thinks I'm a complete idiot. And they were almost always right. But every once in a while, one of the instructors was like, I didn't even <laughs> think about that. Like I didn't even think about that interaction. So, you know, just always remember that too. Like only, only focus on your failures as much as like, as much as they deserve, like, okay, yeah, learn from it, go get yourself a good meal, get back in the fight there, Turbo, and you'll, you'll be fine. But you're worrying about this thing that happened hours ago, and nobody else knows it just like faded off. Yeah, I was actually, that's the next topic I was going to ask you, Aaron, specifically was, who, <laughs> oh, hey. who really decides <laughs> what constitutes a failure, you know? Oh, yeah, I mean, you do, like, when you decide to quit, 
failure is when you just quit trying at all. Failure is when you're like, all right, cool. Like, Hey, I want to, you know, for me, I wanted to be a PJ. I failed my, I'm still failing today. I failed today. I failed on the podcast so far. Like it just, it's a thing all the time. But when I stop trying to be the best PJ that I can, then that's when you fail. If your goal is to become, you know, a special warfare operator and you at one point are just like, I'm sick of trying, I'm sick of waking up, I'm sick of this event, whatever. And you just, you quit trying. That's when you fail, but you get to decide that. Somebody else very rarely takes you out of it. Like we were joking about the medical thing earlier and, you know, get it, you know, some, some people do run up against some really bad circumstances where it might not be their fault or in their control, but 98% of the time it's totally in your control. And you decide when that process is over, you just keep showing up, bring your lunch pail, go to work, get your day of selection done, and then get off into the, to the real career field where you're just doing more of the same. So. 100%. And, you know, a good thing to keep in mind for all you guys that are listening out there, there are guys that, you, like I was talking about before, you're going to go through tons and tons of tests and you're going to fail some of them, a lot of them, all of them, who knows. But like Aaron was saying, you fail that moment that you're like, I'm not even going to try anymore. I'm just going to stop trying to, pro- you know, progress and stop trying to do that goal, accomplish that goal that I was aiming for. That's when you really fail because I have guys that are hitting me up that, you know, were in the pipeline a couple of years ago. They're going to come back and they're going to do a great job. But, and in my eyes, they haven't totally lost it. They failed one event or a couple of events, but they continue to push on and continue to succeed. And they're going to succeed if you have that mindset to where you take that failure, you learn from it, you keep on moving forward and push to the goals that you set for yourself. And you decide whenever that's a total loss and a failure and you don't want to put time towards it, your time should be spent somewhere else. But it's completely up to you, just like Aaron said. Um, All right, so let's go into a little bit more about, you know, we're talking about the cadre's impression and everything. Let's get a little bit more kind of personal and some of the experiences that we had and kind of our teammates' impressions and what we should be thinking about. You know, like you're doing 10 ups, you're that dude that's on the, the gunnel next to the other guys. You see one dude, or maybe it's you, like you popped on that one one session or um, one of the dudes wasn't doing the push ups, pulling their weight, or you're the guy that you see a guy. Hopefully, you're not the dude that's uh, kicking your buddy or whatever because you're just worried about your own breath and you're doing all this crazy stuff <laughs> under the pool or whatever. Um, so what were your impressions of other guys that you saw that did that kind of thing and they kind of failed on the team? Um, what did you guys think of that overall? This is kind of like an open open talk here. I, I would say, well, I was told a long time ago by a stow that everybody has their day, right? Um so like I've been that guy. There's there's been other guys on the team that have been that guy, and really I think what what that still was able to do on our our training team together uh, through hit that attitude was um, everybody's going to have that day where they they jack something up, and uh, and and that's how he kind of looked at it, and that that's how you move forward. So that when you are that guy and you have that day, it's easier to move past it, um, and your teammates uh, because of that environment that that guy the the officer had fostered within that team uh, everybody's able to move past it but you just can't be that guy every single day you know what i mean and it can't be like the the, <laughs> the easy things like you know like you have almost 100 percent control over showing up on time you don't show up on time i'm gonna give you a hard time you know if you don't have like the best excuse in the whole wide world but man if you're just having a rough day <laughs> and uh you pop on a 10 up or a, a 50 or whatever you know like it's gonna be like everybody has their day, or you or you jack up something. It's as you know, it is what it is. And and, and, and as a team, right. and, everybody does have their day. Yep. Nobody gets out unscathed, out of selection. Mm. Yeah, it's a bloodbath, think, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I remember there were some dudes like when I was uh, you know going through in doc. Um, there was one dude in particular. I won't mention his name here, but. I remember <laughs> there was one guy that was that was struggling super bad and. He kept on popping on every single underwater, and we're like, "Dang, this guy is done." Because you know, I'm, people I get into that. I can hear you. We're on the podcast <laughs> together. Right what, here. Why are you? Why are you doing this? I told you how bad this hurts. <sighs> All right, the guy may be a senior master sergeant select right now, but anyway, you, you get into that pain cave and that tunnel where you're just continuing to fail, and and this dude was in that in that pain cave right there. He couldn't see anything else. His face was white. He's just breathing hard. His eyes were big because he hears the instructor saying, one's ready. And then that thunderous, you know, in the skylark when it just kind of echoes. Oh, yeah. And then he says, go. 
and there was the one dude that I was talking about. Um, he steps in front of the other guy and takes his turn. I was like, dang, you know, in, uh, you know, in Indoc, I wouldn't let any of the students do that if I saw it. But when I was a student and I saw him do that, I was like, wow, this dude must be like super squared away and he's covering for this dude. Now you guys can't do that when the instructors are watching. I don't know how the instructors <laughs> miss this. Disclaimer. I mean, go ahead. Yeah. Do it. Disclaimer. Yeah. You're going to, you're going to get in trouble. Or I don't know. You can try it. You do can so try it, you, but it's probably, yeah. Do so at your own peril, but I mean, fine, go ahead. You're already but in the pool. At, what are they going to do? Take you to the pool? <laughs> <laughs> As a student, I was like, dang, that's awesome. This guy is freaking covering for this failure. And the other dude ended up, you know, making it that time, but he ended up quitting later on. But, um, covering it's, for it's very a guy's true. Favorite, Patrick that, definitely yeah. will not let you do that kind of stuff. I yeah, you know, buddy, buddy breathing one time, I was fine at buddy breathing, and this dude was hurting, and I and they put me with him because they they were worried that he was going to fail. So I was his partner on evaluation day and on his reval because he failed at evaluation day, and I knew he was hurting. So I just you know, is it still? I won't say how many breaths they can take, but like. It was my turn. I knew that I was going to be allowed to get a breath and I skipped it just to give it right back to him. Yeah. It wasn't Dang. even my eval, but I paid the man for that one. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. Some heroes don't wear capes. <laughs> he didn't pass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. I love, you know, I love how both of your stories ended in tales of woe. They're like, yeah, and then that guy quit, and then that guy got <laughs> that guy got kicked out. Trent's like, yeah, and then you're out of the air force. Like, what are we talking about, guys? <laughs> the point of that is, you know, don't let yourself get. If you're the person that continues to fail, don't let yourself get into that repetitive mode. Like you consistently think of, like, I just failed. I'm gonna fail again. I just failed. I'm gonna fail again. And then you get into that, like repetitive mode all you can think about is failure and that's what you're going to end up doing because that's what you think about it's kind of like you know when you're driving you stare off at whatever object then you start kind of veering off to that side because that's what you're focused on if you that's why you know people that are looking at cops or people that are pulled over get in other accidents but you know don't let yourself go down that tunnel and don't let yourself be sidetracked of getting into that mindset of like i'm gonna fail i'm gonna fail this again and again you know you should always be just cognizant, like refocus, reset, think about your objective, whatever you need to do in order to accomplish the task. Think about that in your mind. Don't think about the failure. Also a, uh, a pro tip for skydiving. If you're under canopy and you're coming close to the ground, just like you said, don't stare at objects, you know, while you're driving, cause you'll start veering to it. You start staring at things when you're under canopy, when you're getting close to the ground, you start going, Oh, look at that. Oh, wham. Just ran <laughs> right into it. Completely random. And it's, it's along the same thing. So like the target fixation thing where you're just staring at something and you're like, I can't do it. I watched one of the guys that I went through the pipeline with who I will, he has a PA now and has been for a while, but he got out after uh -oh. his second assignment. He, I watched him straight up, just hug a barrel cactus down in Yuma, oh. Arizona. <laughs> and he saw it from like, I mean, I don't know how far away it was. It was far enough away that he was just like, ah, and we're all like, dude, turn, dude, turn your canopy, like turn just a little bit. And he was just the whole time. He was like, nothing's working. Just straight into it. It was great. Well, Hey dude, both of both you and I actually, Brian does too. Probably. Uh, I think we were probably all there when, uh, one person decided to hit a cow and get crapped on. <laughs> Yeah. At Skullthorpe? Yeah. Uh, Skullthorpe, BC. Started, uh, I mean, for everybody that knows, Skullthorpe has got a, it's you know, spelled it's phonetically. Field, you but, have to understand it's spelled phonetically. Yeah. <laughs> but there's a lot of cows there. And, there uh, are a lot of cows there. And he got a little fixated on a cow and hit it, and it scared the crap out of the cow. <laughs> yeah. Well, and yeah, if we're telling Those, the story, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> So he hit the cow because he was unable to steer because winds were right at limits. So he was into the wind and he was just going straight down the cow. He was right over top of the cow. Cows are stupid. And then he hit the cow, scared the cow, hurt his ankle, scared the crap out of the cow. And then because it was high winds, he was drugged through cow poop. And then the IDMT would not let him inside of the van to treat him. He had to ride in the back of the six pack because he was covered in half of his body in English cow poop. And that is to the story. To treat him, like, I really treat, hope he's listening to this. Like too. treat his ego or treat, <laughs> <laughs> treat his, twisted, the, his twisted ankle. The wounds. Oh, his hey, his ego was hurt too. His ego is not <laughs> feeling good either. But his ankle actually was hurt. Like he hurt his knee or his ankle or something because he landed on a cow. 
I really appreciate this, guys. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's that, Trent? I missed that one. Just letting you know, it's, I might hear about this. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I brought it up. I'll take Ooh. it. Hey, this is just a couple of England alumni talking about an inside thing. There's nobody else that knows about this on the face of the planet. So we're just for the record, I've, I've never been stationed in England. Just throwing it out there. <laughs> okay. Didn't say you were. We didn't include you in this. <laughs> <laughs> all right oh, pete you boy. grab you grab the wheel on that one now i just completely lost exactly where i was at <laughs> but let's let's go back to again kind of close to where we were so cadre impression we kind of went over this a little bit but i just want to talk you know specifically you know the instructor standpoint when um uh, yeah i'd see guys fail and recover or not recover but the biggest the biggest thing that i think cadre think about is how is this guy going to react to getting smacked in the face? Like we were talking about with the timelines earlier, a minute 30 to make it to the creek and back and you must be completely drenched. You got a bear crawl back or whatever. Um, you know, there are tons of tests that are going to be just like that and they're going to continue to be pushed to your limit and you're going to fail. And we want to see what are you going to do once you do fail? Are you going to be that person that's like we were talking about before dwelling on that or you're bringing your teammates down we give you guys a, a bathroom break or a snack break or whatever. And you see dudes that are just like staring off into the distant con- contemplating their lives. Like why did I start this in the first place? Like what am I Having doing? Are you that dude crisis? Yeah. Or are you that dude that's, you know, sitting there eating a snack, you know, watching what's going on, watching the area, you know, keeping your head on a swivel while all this stuff is going on. Um, so that's kind of my perspective on what I wanted to see whenever I put guys through a stressful, you know, failure type situation. I don't know. Trent, Aaron, Peach, Peach, you also did instructor things. I'm sure you saw tons of people fail at weapon school. Oh, so, I mean, that's the name of the game at the weapon school. Yeah. I mean, you're, everything is built to test your absolute limit. And with the expectation that you are probably going to fail, you are definitely going to fail at some of the desired learning objectives because they each scenario is built to ensure that you, learn certain objectives but um i think it's you know doing this is kind of a morality thing as well but doing the right thing when no one's looking right um and how does that translate into failure it's yeah okay i failed now what get it going again you know that's this is my two cents on it definitely Trent, Aaron, you got anything on that? Yeah, I know. I, I don't know. No. I, I was like, "Oh, go ahead, bud." Nope, nope. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Good talk. No, I was like, when you, uh, you know, self policing is always the goal as an instructor. So the, you know, I, I, I'll tell you, you know, just for me, my impression of of students that I've had now, like especially for those guys that are operational now, my impression of them as a student is like. I don't know, maybe 1% useful. Like granted, I've seen like a whole bunch of data points. I've seen a million things, but you know, who you are as a student and who you are as, you know, kind of a one deployment or two deployment um, guy or making that transition to the leadership positions or, or getting some of those unique experiences. Like we've had OB on and, you know, these other guys that we've talked about and stuff. And, you know, those things are going to come with your career. Cadre impression is important because we can guide you. Like I've seen thousands of students go through the pipeline, right? Because that was my that was my job. So I saw a thousand data points. I've seen a bunch of different wacky scenarios, and you know the run of the mill scenarios. You know, for some students, it might be like, oh man, this is the worst thing ever. Really, no, I've handled this like four times this year. Come on, I know the right three people to talk to, and this isn't going to be a big deal, right? So um, the things that I always like to see from students. Um, that I think are good that you should like focus on. And it's not all the other stuff. Like students are going to be stupid. I'm going to be like, Oh, remember the time that that guy fell inside of a clothing bin. We had a student that was like reaching to get inside of a clothing bin and it was like up to his waist and he fell like ass over tea kettle, like just completely all the way up, like fell into this bin and we got it on video. Um, so (laughs) there may or may not be a video of this guy. That's a good dude reaching into this bin and completely like yard sailing. And he, he like, got up and, and he had no idea that he was being recorded. So then he like had to like hop out of the bin. It was hilarious. Right. Walk it off. <laughs> right. So it's hilarious. But the good things that we like to see is like when you see a team really clicking, when you see like very little talk, just a lot of work. And even when bad things happen, they're like, yep, that was bad. On to the next thing. What do we got? Like, I, I love it. Um, those are the good type of cadre impressions where I start feeling really good and, you know, really comfortable for a team. For me as an instructor, that was time for me to like, it's time to give these guys more rope. 
give them a little bit more freedom, give them a little bit more, you know, say in how their day goes, like all that stuff. Like if they want to come to me, be like, Hey, we want to, we want to, you know, go on a rock tomorrow morning. Like teams would want to go on rocks at five o'clock in the morning. I'm like, Hey, we're going to go on a rock instead for PT. Can we do that? And then, you know, show up to school a little bit later and be like, yeah, your block instructors are totally willing to, to work. And it's like that most places in the pipeline when things are good, but um, yeah, for cadre yeah. impressions, like that's one of those things that I love seeing, you know, I won't talk about the negative stuff. Hilarious stuff is always funny. Watching that dude fall into that, the huge bin was hilarious. I still had the video on my phone. It's great. Did you guys put hair <laughs> pomade in the bottom of the thing? And he was just reaching in for it. And... <laughs> it was actually like the, uh, <laughs> so it was like the, where the instructors would put their kit. Like when they were, uh, you know, it, it wasn't unserviceable. It's still good kit, but you just got it replaced. They'd put it in there and the students would have like a, a free run of it, but it was a big try wall and he just ate it. It was hilarious. Nice. <laughs> it was great. Um, well, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Well, there, there's there's few things for me at least more uh, rewarding as an instructor than seeing that person that that shows up that fails a lot of stuff or struggles really bad that ends up making it through the pipeline and having a successful career. Um, like when if you quit and I have to go talk to you, like there's usually when I was at the selection course, if a guy quit in the pool or whatever, and they go to the locker room, you know I'm the guy uh, that was assigned to go talk to that person um <laughs> you were the cone sympathizer that's yeah. you wow. you were yeah. is that wow. surprising wow we learned something new uh, every day fellas but like if, if you quit in the pool and i go in there and talk to you and you got the waterworks going and you're sad like I, I feel sympathy for you but i'm like yeah okay well you gotta out process like bye <laughs> but if like wow. if you, <laughs> yeah, okay maybe <laughs> bye but if Get you're out. that guy that obviously like you wherever you wherever you came from, you didn't have enough time in the pool or you're just trying really hard or, you know, and like you just blacked out one too many times. And for medical reasons, we have to wash you out or whatever it is. Or you missed the, the swim by three seconds and uh, that's your, the last straw and we send you to the locker room and I go back there. Um, the hardest thing for me is when the guys that are actually trying their hardest and they're failing like they're like, hey, Sergeant, I'm so sorry. You know, like I was trying, my, you know, like and you know that this kid's giving it his all. And, uh, I mean, I feel a lot more sympathy for that person. And I'm like, I'm giving them all the tips to come back and like trying to be like, Hey man, it's cool. Like growth mindset, nonsense, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to talk your ear off about this. Don't cry in front of me, please. Cause I don't want to have like an emotional reaction. Cause I don't have emotions as far as you <laughs> know. I, if you cry, I'm going to cry. We're both going to be crying. <laughs> I'm a sympathy crier. I'm a sympathy <laughs> crier. I can't help it. But you know what I mean? It's, it's uh, that to me, like if you, if you fail and you gave it a hundred percent as a cadre member, I'm like, good job. You know, like those guys that go face plant during rucks or runs. Like, I'm not looking at that kid being like, man, that guy's a piece of crap. I'm like, that dude really, he went 100% all in. Uh, but if you're like feeling discomfort and then you quit, I'm like, well, better luck next time. And next <laughs> well, time it's see never. You later. Like, bye. Exactly. There are those guys that. So. Those- those guys that take every opportunity they could possibly get to go to like sick call or to just say like, who hey, Sergeant, can we have a, a water break or a whatever break? Like they're always asking for an out and stuff. Yeah. Um, we don't feel sorry for those guys, but just like you said, you know, I saw a lot of people that whenever they quit or they failed out, you have to go in your blues or, you know, it was the old way you have to go in your blues and stand on the black line to be processed by the commandant. And I would sit in on the meetings, you know, talking about, what they were good at, what they weren't going to get, were get, weren't good at. And we, you know, kind of offer a setback based on whether or not, um, we thought a guy is going to have another shot or if they needed to get another couple of years of experience and maturity under their belt. And it was always those guys that, <clears throat> you know, kept their composure mo- like the entire time. And they told us, you know, systematically how they thought about stuff. And they said, you know, I went hundred percent and we know because we were there at the pool with them. Like they literally put their all into this thing and they have the right attitude. They have the right personality. They're a good teammate. And you can see that, you know, the entire time they're at the course or whatever, those guys are going to get a setback. Those guys that are like, you know, we have a record and we look like how many missed training events they have and they miss like every other day or one training event a week or something like that. And it's always a water con event, especially on Thursdays. They're trying to get out of it. You're like, oh, All right, dude, oh you're, you're weird. You're, what's what's we're weird about Thursdays? What's why weird? Thursdays? Yeah, Thursdays? Yeah, why Thursdays? Yeah. I don't know. Thirsty Thursdays. Sometimes I guess ladies night. I don't know. But 
there's those guys that always try to avoid the things that are hard and they let their team go and, you know, do the hard stuff and they'll try and slip by. But everyone's tracking you at selection. They're always writing down whatever you're doing, the, the things that you missed, the way that you acted, the attitude you had when you told them they failed. You know, all that stuff gets written down and recorded to later on decide, like I was saying, when you're in that room, whether or not you're going to get a setback or you're going to get you know, a different job in the Air Force or out. So all that stuff comes to consideration and the cadre impression, you know, the reason we're not, we're talking about this, it's not like at a certain point you have to think about how people are going to judge you. Um, I know everyone always says like, live your own life. Don't worry about people who judge you when you're at selection. That's what <laughs> Wait, it is. What do they say again? YOLO. <laughs> can, can, can you, t- yeah. can you do it just like you did? Oh, live your own life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't care about anybody's judgments. It's, when you go to selection, you're going to care about people's judgments because that is what is going to happen. You have to be squared away all the time. Um, and it is a selection because their opinion is, I guess this is going to be kind of dicey with those instructors instructors over there they're trying to keep it as objective as possible but they have to write down what they see and how they perceive it is what goes on the paper so um you know it's a selection so it matters what they think and how you act whenever you and how you conduct yourself especially in the team environment so think about that stuff whenever you are going to that situation but ultimately you know the real changes that are going to occur with when you fail are the way that you perceive yourself in that moment of failure. Like, like I was talking about on the, on the gunnel or wherever, if you're that person that just got kicked in the face and then you popped or whatever, or you just popped because you were having a bad day, are you going to perceive yourself as a weak person? And are you going to continue to think that you are not capable of succeeding the next time? Um, cause that's, what's really going to matter the most at the end of the day, when you go to the, hit that pool, you know, on that hell night or those hell week or whatever, um, that's, that's what's going to matter the most. So perception of yourself is huge. Um, and that's going to set the precedent for your time at selection, you know, how you overcome those obstacles. I know we already did the moving towards obstacles, but overcoming the obstacles while we're at selection, <laughs> um, really is going to set the precedence. Like, are you going to stop and you're going to push forward when things get, start to get tough? Um, all right. So let's get into personal biggest failures at selection. Um, we'll do, who wants to go first? And if we you can, we can just get mine out of the way, all of them, all of my failure, like, like the <laughs> chronicle, like I feel like I've already laid this out on a couple different platforms. So I think right. I'm good. I think out one of them. Anyway. Uh, Pick out one of them and then tell us, you know, how you handle it and how these guys should handle it. Oh man. Uh, man, my, if I had to go biggest failure, I'll tell you what. So I, I actually did. I came down to, I came down to my last go, like the last time that I was allowed to leave the water service on Digendon. Don. I'd never Digendon Don at, uh, you know, at the end doc that I went to the first and the second times I was totally okay with it. I wasn't as fast as I had a good friend that could do it in like 10 seconds. He would just smash it, come up. He was perfect every time. It was awesome. It was a, it was a joy to watch. That was just his event. But um, I, <laughs> I was never bad at it. Um, and, and it never really stressed me out that much. It was okay. But no kidding. I got done. I was really close on one of my, my pull-up cow numbers. I was really close. I ended up, you know, doing good enough to pass the eval. And then I, was, I, I thought I was on cruise control. I was like, all right, cool. I got all the way through the pool session that day. Ditch and Don was one of the later events. I went down, came back up. The instructor was like, fail. I thought he was joking with me. I was just like, hi, yeah, whatever. Because that's how that's how confident I was at Ditch and Don. I felt great. I hadn't failed it in like a week. So I was just like, oh, no, I'm fine, whatever. But uh, no, so sure enough, I did. So I went down, put it back on, came back up. He's like, all right, go. So I went down and, and I did the exact same thing. I failed it again. I had to reval the next day. So that was like the last time I had one shot to do it um, in the pool with no warm up. <laughs> it was like basically like go in, try it a little bit, get yourself ready to go. You can take a practice run. Like, here you go. And I was just like, all right, well, my, my whole pipeline uh, rests on this moment. I mean, I, I, you know, obviously I passed it, but uh, you know, maybe getting a little bit complacent there, even with what was on the line. Cause I was, I definitely went into that reval and I was like, man, uh, did I not take it serious enough yesterday? Was I, was I <laughs> on cruise control? Like, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I was, I didn't feel like I was, but I don't know. So yeah. Yeah. Let me just cover ditching down real quick. Just uh, a <laughs> quick overview. Basically <laughs> you were kind of for, for you guys that don't know, you're wearing a 16 pound weight belt, a mask, a, um, fins, and you have to 
kind of go down to the pool, a 12 foot pool, and then ditch your stuff down there in a certain order it has to be like perfect. And within a certain parameter, and then you come back up and then you got to go back down and don your gear and then hands up, go to the pool side of the pool. But how do you suggest guys, um, you know, recover from that or learn from that kind of thing? Yeah, I, I don't know. Cause I don't know if I, I don't know if I got the reval by sheer luck or if I really did the, you know, I felt like I had an instructor that yeah. definitely was giving me like, it was 100% fair, but it was also not lenient at all. So I knew that with that instructor, yeah. I was, I was positive that I passed. Um, I would just say, you know, stay in, stay in the fight. Like I didn't take too much time that night. I didn't do anything out of the ordinary. I didn't come up with this magical new drill that I was going to do. I just had a bad go. It just happened to be on an eval. So I just kind of had to put that beside me or behind me and then kind of trust my training. Like my training was there. It's that's not what failed. I just, I had a bad day at ditch and Don that day and I just needed to perform the next day. So, you know, I I didn't come up with a bunch of crazy wazoo things that I was going to do or stay up late at night, you know, running through, you know, dry drills or anything. I just, sometimes you just have to go perform. Yep. Just take it and keep on moving. Well, it's funny because I think I had a lenient instructor one time, but it wasn't like necessarily during the pipeline. It was at free fall school. And you're looking at a guy that took every single jump it that you were allowed to make it through free fall school. And it's a, it's one of those things like no one fails free fall school, right? Like everybody makes it through and it's no problem. <laughs> right. Look, man, I come at, you know, like how you fin? Like that's how I come out of the plane. Like my legs want to <laughs> fin all the way down. But um, I remember my, my last my last jump, you know, you got the, the full everything on. And I jump out and I do exactly what the instructor says. And uh, I won't go into too many details. It definitely wasn't a low pool. Um, but we got on the ground. And he's like, no, you did everything I told you to do. And uh, you passed. But, man, like moving forward from something like that. And it's, it's like it's I was so close to complete humiliation for almost failing free. You know, like I'm just not a natural faller. Like I'm a tense person. And that goes against everything. Uh, that's required in that school. Are you, are you, um, we haven't jumped together, but are you any better at jumping now? <laughs> no, we all know no, his I'm, answer. What? No, I'm, I'm yeah, it's, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be, I'd probably be dead if I wasn't better at jumping at this point. <laughs> well, it's the, the kicking going out the plane. I'm like, Oh, no, that's, get away that's yeah. ugly. Well, it's funny though. I stopped doing it after my instructor stopped correcting me on it. It's a weird, you know, like those mind things, like, cause he kept talking to me like, Hey, stop kicking your feet on the way out the door. And as soon as he was like, Hey man, it's not a big deal. It's not affecting your jumps. Just go ahead and do it. The rest of the videos, I'm not finning my way out the door. It was just that weird, <laughs> like, don't kick, don't kick, don't kick. And of course on my way out the door, I'm, I'm finning my way out. Yep. Target so. fixation. You were just thinking about kicking. That's what you did. See, and I, I failed a lot. Speaking of kicking, that's what, uh, that's what my little story is final eval at indoc whenever we used to do them on fridays Mm. was i i crushed all the other events and then the was it three thousand or four thousand meter it was a six thousand meter swim when you went through in korea yeah (laughs) uphill okay in the water but i uh so i saw i'm doing it finning was never my uh my strong suit as we've talked about in previously but uh i failed the eval by two seconds Dang. two seconds and two instructors come talk about it the one guy that's you know counting my reps my laps and then and then the essentially the head instructor or the proctor for that pool session and they're talking about it and the one that's counting me he's like hey man i know that you want to give this to him but two seconds is two seconds and that's a failure and that we have a standard for a reason. I was like, okay. So he goes, you're going to, you're going to re-eval tomorrow. It's like, okay. <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, there was, there was no other option. It's just, I mean, you're talking about failing by, you know, two seconds. What is that? A turn on the, on the wall, maybe one or two turns on the wall. Like, did they tell you that you were going to fail? Like when you were, you know, 3000 meters in or whatever, they're like, this guy is really cutting it close. Like hurry up. Or, you know, we did, we did claps or just something to tell you. I had been cutting it close the entire time when it came (laughs) to (laughs) swimming. He's like, listen, I live in that life, man. They tell me that every day. That's just par for the course. Yeah. When it, when it came to finning. Yeah. That was, that was just like, oh, well he'll, he'll squeak it through. You know, he always has before. Not yeah. so much that day. Sure. Not yeah. this time. And not very many people fail finning, and especially during the final eval. You know, you kind of get 
better as, wow, as the weeks goes on. Yeah, most I'm, of the people. I'm, I'm just saying, <laughs> hey, my, my story is similar. So mine was at dive school and I failed drown proofing. So I know drown proofing is like the like, easiest thing. You're supposed to just <laughs> like drown be proofing? able to, yeah, like drown proofing. And I was just like, no, no, but like drown proofing. Yeah, like drown proofing. <laughs> Like, like I the got thing to the that I used where, to kind of almost fall asleep, asleep doing on? because it was so relaxed. Oh, okay, I go, no. yeah. Well, <laughs> hey, I fell asleep swimming. All right. So is that what happened? <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. I didn't fall asleep while oh, I was drown proofing. Okay. No, I'm talking about when I'm thin, I fell asleep. That was like my zone out. Don't even think about anything moment. But yeah, I was uh, at dive school. I failed the first time and... It was a 12 foot pool. We'd only trained in the Skylark before and a nine foot pool. So that was my first time going into a 12 foot pool, not an excuse or anything. I should have still knocked it out, but, um, you know, I pushed off the first time and I had that mask in my teeth. Um, and I didn't make it to the top. And I was like, <laughs> Oh, sh- Oh crap. This is not good. <laughs> This is not going to be good. I did not sink expect fast, this at all. Sink fast, yeah. sink fast. Yeah. I love, you're like, that's the worst. It's like, do we like three you're feet like, below the water and like two feet above the bottom and you're just stuck in like eternity. You're like, I can't go anywhere. It's purgatory. And I might you, as well be in jail. I can't do anything to, to affect and you this immediately, scenario. immediately start gupping because you're like, <laughs> heart rate just went up 20. You're like, no, no, I'm right there. Oh no, I know. Uh, anyway, so... Yeah, I ended up doing a kick at the top on my like third or fourth one or something like that. So I re it and uh, I passed the second time with difficulty. I still sucked at it because I didn't really have like remedial training or anything. They're just like, all right, come back tomorrow and we'll try again. And I still sucked at it, but I just got it out because I was like, I'm not going home. I'm just going <laughs> to suck it. Suck it up if I pass out and water in my lungs, whatever. I wake up in the hospital, but I'm not going to go home because of this. But, uh, yeah, that was, that was my thing. And, you know, I, uh, up to that point, I didn't have a lot of difficulty, especially with drown proofing. Like you guys said, it caught me by surprise because I was like, uh, it's just drown proofing. Like it's not a hard thing. I've done it a bunch of times, but that really caught me off. And that kept me on my toes throughout the rest of dive school. Cause I was like, holy crap, if, uh, I had trouble with this. I got to reevaluate the things that I think. I'm <laughs> well, you're just you're just eyeing down the schedule. Like, hmm, I wonder if that's as hard as I think it is. <laughs> oh yeah, what's different about this well, water yeah, exactly. temp pool? Are there sharks in the bay there? <laughs> like, what's going to affect me here? So you know that that kind of kept me on my toes, and that's something that I think was beneficial for me when I was going through the rest of high school. So, all right. So we went through that. We'll go through a couple more questions here, um, specifically like instructors and that kind of stuff. Um, let's go through, let's talk a little bit about, about more about the uh, mental aspect of, uh, let's go to Trent, having a bad day at selection. Like everyone has that like day where you just are screwing everything up and whatever. How do you, what kind of tools do you use to get over that kind of thing? And what do you, how do you kind of reframe your mind on that? Well, I mean, just how, like you talked about, like when I was a young person, I was incredibly dishonest with myself and I have a point here, but like if I failed at something, (laughs) I would, I would just lie to myself, you know? And then that's what kept me up at night really is that I was lying to myself and I wasn't being honest about what happened, why it happened and so on and so forth. And so as I, as I grew, um, the first step for me is to be honest about what it is uh, and, and who it, whose fault it was and why it happened. Um, I, I tend to take training very seriously. So I was at a, a CQB course and um, I get super amped up for these things because, you know, that CQB, there's like the worst possible scenario I could ever be in. And um, I was the, I think I was the senior enlisted dude that was there at the time. And uh, I ended up, uh, it was a beautiful shot. I ended up shooting one of my own guys right in the noggin. You know what I mean? Like he came around, I couldn't see his chem stick. He like leaned over and we're taking fire from that direction. I just, I didn't PID correctly. I can't do it with my hands. I'm sorry. Boom. Perfect shot. It was, it was beautiful. Um, But like about three seconds later, I realized I'd shot probably my favorite person (laughs) that was on that team. And uh, and and it's hard because it's dark in there. The music is turned up to like, you know, 11 and, uh, Maybe yeah. if I don't say anything, no one will ever know that I shot this dude in the head. You know what I mean? Like I, I just brained my own dude in training. So 
as soon as we went, all went back to the room and we, we all sat around, like the, f- the first thing I have to do, and I just for the record, I don't enjoy doing stuff like this. I had to be like, hey guys, um, I know I just yelled at you guys about something stupid yesterday because I'm the senior enlisted <laughs> dude here. Uh, I have a confession to make, uh, and, and this is what I did. You know, this is what happened. I got a little too amped up. You know, my heart rate was a little higher than it should have been, and um, and now I owe something to the the heritage. Um, mascot that is in our team room and it's definitely not a bar so uh but i mean it's hard but like i'm surrounded by a bunch of dudes that are that are younger and and lower ranking than i am but like that's that's the key right there is like i didn't dwell on that forever and it did make me a little bit sharper throughout the rest of the course but i learned something from it but i was like dude ain't no one else jacked up like you know like of course i'm like well i didn't see his kim stick like walk around so i can see your kim stick bro but um you know, it was my fault. And that, that's the key to me is, is, is immediately being like, boom, my fault, my responsibility, learn from it, admit to it, move forward and, uh, and keep training. Yeah. hundred percent. You have to own your successes as along with your failures, because the only way that you're going to actually move forward and, you know, make progress is by internalizing those things. I'm sure like immediately you felt terrible. And like, you, like you said, owning up to it and saying like, Hey, I totally screwed this thing up. Just want you guys to know then that also, you know, lets people know that they can trust you and trust is, is huge on the team because they know that if there's anything that happens they're you're going to tell them straight up, like, Hey, I screwed this up. Let me, let's figure out how to fix this. You know, obviously it's in training and if you weren't in training, then it wouldn't be something that you can really fix. I'm looking at Jared's face and he doesn't want to jump with me or shoot with me now. So (laughs) you're over two fella. You got got a judgy face there, bro. You're you're over two fella. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. I'm showing that my bad. You're like, (laughs) he just hit him him with that. You better stay on the truck face. (laughs) (laughs) Nicholas Cage, come on. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it's important to, when you have a bad day and you have that thing, you know, just internalize it and then learn from that thing, continue moving on and don't let yourself spiral into that that sense of hopelessness and nothing's going to improve and that kind of stuff because that will get you out way faster than just failure on its own. Um, all right, so Peach, uh, in a high-stress environment, you know, people always say failure is not an option. You know, there's shirts and there's mugs and all that kind of stuff out there about failure, not being an option. What's your take on this, uh, popular saying and is failure an option? Well, I mean, I, I think (laughs) sometimes you can't, you can't fix the scenario or you can't perform well enough for you to succeed. So by that regard, failure is an option. Now failure doesn't have to be a decision point for you though. If you decide not to fail, then then don't fail at your performance, right? I can't necessarily help all the other variables that are in the environment or just like I've said before, the enemy has a vote. So like as long as my performance is successful and at the level that it needs to be, then at least within myself, failure is not a, a decision point. A failure absolutely is an option. And sometimes you just can't help it. Now you're going to fail. Failure. I, I love this one. Failure is most certainly an option. Like you can fail. I, I've seen, I've done it. I've failed. I've seen people do it. Like I've seen people, like real world missions. It's unfortunate to say so, but you know, sometimes failures lead to deaths uh, on the battlefield and hopefully we learn from them. We don't repeat those in the future, but you know, training, same, same sort of thing. Like, it, it sucks, but it is an option. I don't think that you should include it in everything you're doing. You know, you shouldn't be like, oh, I should fail. I think you should know exactly what that failure looks like. Like we always do, you know, the risk to a mission or the risk to a force. And really what that is, is what would make the mission fail? What would hurt my team so badly that we couldn't do the mission anymore? So the, you figure those two things out. It should be part of your planning, but maybe not Maybe not part of your go-tos. Maybe uh, maybe quitting right out the gate. Let's see how this feels. You know, like try it on for size. Try it for a couple of days before we start, you know, accepting failure early on in a process, you know? It's funny you talk about, you mentioned the missions and stuff like that, Aaron. What a lot of people, uh, well, people within our community realize this and understand this, but a lot of people outside don't, is that all these decorations and medals that people have earned are because the situation went bad terribly terribly like, south like Horrible, there was yeah. a mistake exactly. it was it wasn't it was perfect. either yeah. yeah poor situation poor decision making poor mission planning like something went wrong 
and luckily somebody or a group of people were there to perform and rectify the situation and get everybody out of it. But those things happen because things went wrong. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, and, and no plan survives first contact, right? And just like when you're entering the pipeline, like no one's planning on probably not failing a bunch of times to succeed. But I think we've all been on missions where like you have to adapt and overcome. Like we don't necessarily call it a failure, but like what you had planned to do is not necessarily what happens, but we still end up being on the successful side um, just because of the way that we deal with these situations. Yeah, and I think it's important also to just kind of point out, you know, you react to the things that you are aware of at the time. So, you know, there are a lot of people that can armchair quarterback and be like, you know, you read a book or whatever, and you're like, oh, well, why didn't they just do this or whatever after the fact? And the reality is, you know, if you're the dude on the ground, you see what you see and you hear what you hear, whether the radio contact didn't come in, you know, later on, you'll like, oh, that's what they said. A buddy of yours will tell you like, oh, crap, I totally didn't even hear that on comms. Like there are plenty of times when, you know, I was doing, you know, the team leader thing, you have a couple radios, you're trying to talk to another person that's here in real life, you're the airplane, the other team, and you're just like trying to figure out what's what you miss things that are going on and other people catch it. So once you get that full story and it's in a book or whatever, it's easy to be like, Oh, they should have just went this way instead of this way. Yeah. It's easy to say, but that dude, maybe he missed something. Maybe he wasn't able to see it was dark, you know, whatever the the fact is. So just saying that, cause we're not trying to like, you know, armchair quarterback or sharpshoot anybody that did anything, but you will fail and you have to definitely think about what you're going to do in that moment. And that's why it's important to just talk about this thing like we're talking about right now, failing, because you're going to continue to fail. And if you're in a deployed situation and things are on, like lives are on the line and stuff, then you have to continue to move forward. And you can't be like, oh man, I totally screwed up that, that calm with the aircraft or whatever. I sounded like an idiot. <laughs> you don't have time to like think about that stuff. You have to keep on man, moving forward. <laughs> I hope you sounded like that too. It sounded like an idiot. <laughs> oh, um, so like an idiot. Ugh. It's like Napoleon Dynamite. It. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Dude, eat your food, guys. I think quarantine's getting to us. Yeah, uh, <laughs> we're we're all creeped over here. This is the most human contact we've had. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. I'll yeah. Do. All right. Let me just end it. Um, you know, pretty much on that note right there, I was going to talk about a little bit of success and that kind of stuff, but let's leave it at failure and we won't talk about success. We'll save it for a future episode. Yeah. Failure failure. done. Success. Next up. Next up success. (laughs) All right. Let's turn it around. Be a short podcast. (laughs) Yeah. Let's talk about all our successes. Crickets. (laughs) All right. Yeah. So, um, you guys got anything else? Final parting words here? No, no stay no, safe out there, up. everybody. Stay, uh, stay, right. stay home. Do your part. Help out. Thanks. Bye. All right. You know, if you don't try, then you automatically fail. But if you at least try and fail, then you know that you've at least tried to do something. And it doesn't matter what the armchair quarterback is going to say at the end of the day. The people are going to, you know, say what they're going to say. But overall. What matters is how you internalize that failure and if you make yourself better from the failure. So continue to learn from it. Don't dwell on those little failures that you may have had in the past. Um, Just learn, push on. And over time, you'll develop a, you'll develop like Peter saying, you know, you get over it a lot quicker. You start learning a lot quicker. You don't beat yourself up as much if it was something that was kind of smaller and you kind of rationalize, you know, it wasn't that big of a deal. Um, but you keep those really big things that you mess up with you for the rest of your life. And you're always going to use those and reach back whenever things go south. And you're like this, I need to make sure this happens because I don't want another repeat of this failure that I had in the past. And you're going to continue to do that throughout the rest of your life. And, um, whether it's an academic test or a physical test or, you know, a social test like selection, they're testing the kind of person that you are, you're going to screw up. But what you need to do, especially in selection, is bounce back and continue moving forward. Be that guy that motivates. Don't be the person that's in their pain cave, constantly thinking of failure because you're going to go straight towards the failure whenever that happens. You have to be that person that moves their, adjusts your target, stop looking at that failure that happened, and then adjust back onto the goal and where you're headed. And that is, you know, overall success and pursuit of whatever kind of goals you have in mind. So keep that in mind. Uh, again, we appreciate you guys listening to the podcast. 
You can hit us up anytime via email, IG, YouTube, throw some comments down below. Let us know, you know, some of your successes, failures, and ways that you can overcome them, share with each other. And go out there and keep on training. I know things are crazy right now in the world, but you can still get your run on, get your ruck on, be outside, you know, just do what you got to do for the meantime. Um, you know, hopefully this all goes over soon and life continues back to normal. So thanks again for listening and we will catch you guys on the next episode. See you. Later. Later. Later.